Hey, this is Chad Ferguson, Learn to Catch Catfish.com, and this is Catfishing Radio, Episode 2. You're listening to Learn to Catch Catfish, Catfishing Radio, with your host, professional guide, Chad Ferguson. Catfishing Radio covers tips, tricks, and information to help you learn how to catch more and bigger catfish on your next fishing trip. The ultimate resource available for expert catfishing information. After listening, make sure you visit learntocatchcatfish.com. Now, here's your host, Chad Ferguson. Hello, everybody. Again, this is Chad Ferguson, LearnToCatchCatfish.com, and this is Catfishing Radio, Episode 2, the second edition of the podcast radio show from Learn to Catch Catfish. And uh, this is the fishing show that is dedicated to helping you learn how to catch more catfish, bigger catfish, you name it, whatever your goals are. We want to help you with sharing the information that you need to be more successful out there on the water. And it is Friday, April 22nd, Earth Day, and Good Friday. And I had full intentions of getting this episode recorded and up on the website earlier this week. We had a crazy amount of traffic the other day to the website, uh, and our traffic just about doubled, and our servers couldn't handle it. So the site shut down, and we had to go in and make some massive overhauls to the website to be able to handle the additional traffic that we're getting. Some of that's because of the podcast that we just started, obviously, that you're listening to. And uh, in the process, had a lot of complaints recently about people not being able to navigate the site, that it was slow, uh, not being able to close the uh, newsletter sign-up window that comes up on the site. And I believe that we have all of those issues resolved now, and you should notice a much better speed from the site while it's loading and uh, while you're navigating around the website there. So hopefully that's all fixed. Last week, Catfishing Radio Episode 1 had a great response to the episode. A lot of good feedback through email, phone calls, comments on the website, and uh, a lot of guys out there listening on their iPods and iPhones and other uh, MP3 players listening back and forth on the way to work, mowing the yard, all kinds of things like that. So I want to make sure, you know, you guys know you don't have to sit in front of this and listen to it on the computer. If you have a, a iPod or iPhone or MP3 player, you can certainly download that. And I put some instructions last week on the podcast episode, and we'll continue to try to work on some more tutorials on the different ways to go about doing that so you can listen outside of the house, away from the computer, doing whatever you're doing, because that's really my intent for this, to be able to share information for those people that don't have a lot of time to sit in front of the computer and read, so you can still get the catfishing information that you want uh, that we share through Learn to Catch Catfish. And I also want to say, if you're listening through uh, your iPod or iPhone and you've gone in and subscribed through iTunes, or if you have access to iTunes, please go to the Learn to Catch Catfish podcast page there on iTunes and click the star rating down at the, the middle of that page and give us a, a, a rating if you like the show and leave a comment or two there. Let people know what you think because that will definitely help with uh, getting more people to come in and listen to the podcast. And the more people I get listening, the more possibilities I'm going to have on what I can do with the podcast and with the website Uh, and I'm really trying to attack this thing from all angles and um, you know make sure that I'm providing articles and video and audio and everything else to cover uh, all facets of the audience and people that come in and visit the website and I also want to remind you anything I talk about in the episode of Catfishing Radio you can go back to that page on Learn to Catch Catfish and I'll put links to everything that I discuss on that page so you can go in and find it and uh, that way if you're driving down the road or working in the yard or doing whatever you're doing and you're listening to the podcast you don't have to worry about trying to write things down you'll be able to go back and find the links to what I'm talking about and the information there in the show notes for that episode and if you have a question about fishing for catfish certainly you can go to learn to catch catfish.com Go up to the top of the page and click on Ask a Question and submit us a question through email 
But if you have a question you'd like to get on the podcast radio show on Catfishing Radio, then give us a call at 817-381-5604 and leave us a message on there with your question. We can actually go in and splice that in here to the podcast with your question and uh, feature you talking and asking your question. If you're embarrassed and you're not sure um, about the question that you're asking, just don't leave your name on there and uh, nobody will know who you are. So not a big deal at all, and we certainly will not give out your phone numbers or anything like that or any kind of personal information that you don't want to share. But uh, again, you can give us a call, 817-381-5604, and leave us your questions for Catfishing Radio there on the hotline. And what I'm going to do this week on uh, Catfishing Radio Episode 2 is kind of the same format that I did last week and just going in and answering some of the questions that have been submitted through the website Uh, over the last year because I have a huge backlog of questions that I have not gotten to and it's really been nagging at me. I feel bad that I've not responded to a lot of these questions so I'm going to start working my way through them gradually. Ultimately my goal is to really get more topical and not do all the shows in a question answer format but I'm going to go in and talk about some other things and, and may go in and talk about just one show about chumming for catfish or just one show about using your fish finder and then again ultimately i'm going to bring some more people in to catfishing radio and do some interviews and cover some other topics there as well but this week again i'm going to go into the question and answer but before i do that i want to reach out to everybody and talk about the articles that i put up on the website this last week about uh texas proposal to uh legalize catfish noodling and um, I, you know, I'm not against noodling for catfish. Uh, I'm against people in Austin or in whatever state capital we're in uh, proposing legislation and making changes to fish and game laws that they know nothing about. And I feel like Parks and Wildlife, uh, DNR. Department of Conservation, whatever these groups are called in your state, those are the guys that know what's going on in the lakes and rivers, and they're the ones that need to be managing it. Personally, I don't think that uh, legalizing noodling for catfish in Texas is a step in the right direction. I think it's a contradiction to the direction that the state has been going over the past few years. But I know certainly there's a lot of people out there that don't agree with me and that would have a differing opinion. My primary concern is that you go out and and educate yourself and learn what the effects of noodling for catfish are if you live in Texas or if this same issue is going on in your state and reach out to the people that are making these decisions and let them know uh, that you don't agree with it or that you agree with it. Uh, Because if you don't make your voice heard, then you can't come back and argue when these laws get passed and complain about them. Certainly you can, I guess, come back and complain about them, but it doesn't do a whole lot of good. You know, reach out there and get involved. If you guys live in Texas, go to that article that I wrote about Texas proposed legalization of catfish noodling and um, send an email to your state representative. Let them know what's going on. Let them know that you don't agree with this. Uh, Or if you do agree with it, let them know. And make sure that we get this issue in the right hands because it does need to be in the hands of Texas Parks and Wildlife. It doesn't need to be in the hands of anybody else out there. And so I'm going to try to jump right in here to the question and answers that I've received through the Ask a Catfishing question page. And uh, I'm going to make this show a lot shorter than I have done the last show was just almost an hour I think maybe a little bit over an hour going to try to cut down on the time a little bit because I think the last one was just a little bit too long so I'm going to jump right into the catfishing question and answers and the first question that I wanted to cover uh, came in a long time ago it came in from Bobby and uh, he sent a question said I'm fishing a tournament on Arrowhead Lake later this month Uh, it's a prepared bait tournament and I was wondering how long it takes chum to attract fish. I need to know how long to stay in a spot before moving. And uh, Lake Arrowhead is a lake here uh, northwest of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, located real close to Wichita Falls, Texas. And 
but this question is not specific to Lake Arrowhead because certainly this is going to be the case regardless of where you fish. Uh, if you're going to use catfish chum to uh, chum or bait a hole. And I want to say real quick, you know, I've covered this in depth in a couple of articles about chumming and baiting a hole for catfish on the website. And I just want to clarify really before I go any further that there is a huge difference. Uh, chumming is the process of basically going out, throwing that soured grain or range cubes or whatever you're going to use in the water and immediately fishing you know there within a few minutes to within an hour of uh, when you throw that stuff into the water baiting a hole is more of a long-term consistent process where you go out you know every day or every other day on a regular basis and you throw that stuff in the exact same area and um, you know get those fish accustomed to coming into that same area time after time and feeding now you may ask which one's better is it better to chum or is it better to bait a hole and you know it's, it's really kind of a toss-up I don't spend a whole lot of time uh, baiting holes for catfish and I move around a whole lot from spot to spot on different days and and there's a lot of different reasons for that because I'm on the water so much with the amount of fishing pressure and um, you know that I'm always having clients in the boat with me um, but I think certainly chumming is a process that works very well for catching channel catfish uh, it's not something that's very effective for catching blue catfish especially with soured grains or range cubes I do know some people that will chum for blue cat but that's a complete and total different approach and uh, you know that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day so specific to Bobby's question about how long should I wait in one spot before it, I need to move when I'm chumming and how long it takes the chum to attract fish when I go out, if I'm fishing for channel cat and I throw soured weed out, typically what I do is when I get on the water, as soon as I get in the water, I'll go out and find me three, four, five, six places, and I'll throw that soured grain out, and I'll start fishing um, the first spot that I grain. So if I pick six places, I'll go get six different spots, throw that grain out, make sure that it's spread out in the water really well like I covered in a cat fishing with a baseball bat, and then once I've chummed that sixth place, I'll go back and start fishing that first spot. It doesn't take very long when you throw soured grain in the water to start attracting fish and getting them feeding and getting them moving around. A lot of times you can throw it in the water, bait a hook, catch a fish, and within minutes you'll have fish with that uh, soured grain in their bellies. So I would say, you know, really it takes a matter of minutes to start attracting the fish. Now, scent travels farther in warmer water. So if you're fishing in the summertime, certainly it's going to work much faster than it does in the cooler weather. Does that mean that it won't work in the winter? No, absolutely not. Had some amazing fishing trips, fishing in the winter, fishing for channel cat fishing over soured wheat or over range cubes or cotton seed cakes and, and it certainly will work in the colder months or in the cooler months in the fall and winter but is definitely much more effective during the summertime or in the warmer water so how long does it take you know it, it can be a matter of minutes up to as long as I would say 15 minutes at the very most then the second part of Bobby's question how long should I set before I move? Um, this is kind of a tricky question, and I'm a very impatient fisherman and um, have somewhat of a sixth sense a lot of times as to whether or not the fish are going to move in there and bite. As a general rule, if I sit in a spot for 15 minutes and have not produced fish, I'm gone. Now, there are some exceptions to that but typically not with fishing for channel catfish usually fishing for blue catfish but for the most part overall 
15 minutes, if I don't have at least some bites and some activity or have put fish in the boat, then I'm going to pack up and move. And what I'll do is move on to that next spot that I chummed and fish it. If that wood doesn't produce, then I move on to the next spot and fish it. Now, that 15-minute rule, it's probably pretty lenient when fishing for channel catfish because if I baited a hole and I'm con- or chummed a hole and I'm confident that I'm in the right spot and that the fish should be there and I sit for five, six, seven minutes, ten minutes, and I don't even have a bite, I'm probably not going to ride that 15-minute window out. I'm probably just going to sit and uh, go ahead and pack up and move on to my next spot. Uh, certainly, in the cooler weather, I will ride that out a little bit longer and wait and see. So, long story short, I guess, it can take just a matter of a few minutes to start drawing fish in, or it can take, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I have had some times where I've thrown some chum out, started fishing, didn't catch fish, moved to another spot, fished it for a little while, did good, then moved back to the first spot, and the fish had moved in there where they weren't previously there. But for the most part, that's not the rule. For the most part, when I throw it out there, start fishing, you usually know pretty quick if they're going to be there or not. Um, You know, the thing with catching channel catfish is, and I tell people this all the time, is when you're fishing for channel catfish, the hardest part is catching the first one. And once you catch that first one, you can usually catch a whole lot more right after that. And, you know, that has to do when you're using chum and when you're not using chum, uh, both. Because when you find that first one, when you're fishing with punch bait, you're fishing with dip bait, you're throwing that stuff out there, and that smell is getting in the water because it's breaking down in the water, it's falling off the hook, that scent is dissipating all around, and that process alone really is a form of chumming and drawing those catfish in to that area that you're fishing. You know, a lot of these guys that that fish uh, tournaments and they have no chumming rules, uh, they use fishing with punch baits and dip baits as a workaround for that no chumming rule. And what they'll do is they'll take their rod and they'll dip it down in a big wad of dip bait or or punch bait and they'll load up that hook with a wad of punch bait the size of a baseball and they'll cast it out there and then once they get it in the water they'll pop it real good and knock all that bait off the hook and they'll reel it in bait it up again with another great big wad the size of a of a golf ball or a baseball and they'll cast it back out there again a little bit further over and once they get it out there in the water they'll pop it again and knock some more of that bait off and they use that punch bait to get out there in the water and start to dissipate and start drawing those catfish in and use that technique as a workaround for a no chumming rule for catching catfish. Uh, Guys that use dip bait what they'll do Uh, or sponge baits, what they'll do is they'll bait a hook up with that sponge bait or with that dip bait. They'll cast it out there, and as soon as it hits the water, they'll pop it, and they'll watch that dip bait or sponge bait come all off of that hook or that sponge and all into the water, and you can see that stuff spreading around in the water when you pop that hook real good. Bring it back in, they'll bait it back up, cast it back out, and do it again. And they'll repeat that process over and over and over again multiple times and really work on getting that scent in the water. So, you know, that in itself, you know, is again, it's a, a form of chumming just by getting that scent in the water and getting that bait to break down because a uh, channel cat, they're like big swimming taste buds and swimming noses. And their whole body is covered with olfactory sensors, and they just swim around. And, boy, when they start picking that stuff up, they'll start honing in on the spot. Once you catch that first one, more often than not, you're going to be able to catch a whole lot more. Are there instances where you get into a spot, you catch one channel cat, and you don't catch any more? Sure, absolutely. But those are really the exception more than a rule. And, uh, you know, my, my buddy Gordon Burrell, 
make used to make that old Gordon's catfish bait, and he's a heck of a channel cat fisherman. And uh, you know, when you get out fishing with Gordon, he, he just preaches that off and on the whole time you're fishing. Boy, you catch that first channel cat, all it takes is that first one. And uh, you know, it, it's true. And uh, more often than not, once you find one, you're going to be able to find a whole lot more. You may have a little bit of a lull in action, but if you stick with it, a lot of times you can continue to catch fish in that same spot. So I just say, you know, once you throw that chum out, give it 15 minutes, 30 minutes at the very most. I typically never wait that long, but I know some guys that do, and it works for them. I'm just impatient and have a hard time sitting and waiting that long if I'm not getting bites. I'd rather go find them than wait for them to come to me. And that once you throw it out there, you know, give it uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And if it's not drawing the fish in, then roll out because it really should start to be attracting the fish within a few minutes. And the next question goes back into the chumming category. And it came from Lance at Lake of the Ozarks. And Lance wanted to know what the best thing is to use for chumming for catfish. Is it better to use soured wheat, soured milo, range cubes, or cottonseed cakes? And I covered this extensively. I've written articles about just about every different one of these catfish chums. And I'll go back and put links to all this in the show notes. But definitely, my preference is to use soured wheat. If I was not using soured wheat, I would use soured milo and used that for years with a lot of success. I do get a lot of questions from people that uh, read my articles and they tell me that they can't find milo in their area. And uh, I don't know if that's a Texas-specific thing. Uh, What that is, I do know it's called grain sorghum in some places. But uh, and some places will call it maize. That's a pretty common term for it here in Texas. But uh, if you go into the feed store and ask for milo or ask for maize or grain sorghum, they should know what you're talking about. Um, I prefer the wheat because I think that it works better and it's cheap. But but overall, I think that, that for some reason, the wheat does work better than the milo does. And I don't know why that is. I wish I had an answer. Uh, I know a lot of the hardcore channel cat guys that I know that, that fish for channel cat exclusively or just do a lot of channel cat fishing, most of them prefer wheat over milo as well. Uh, Cottonseed cake is good. It's hard to find a true cottonseed cake anymore. Uh, The closest thing that seems to be readily available is range cubes. Range cubes will work. I don't think that range cubes work near as well as wheat or milo do. And the, the smell of soured wheat and milo is obviously thousands percent stronger than the smell of range cubes. Uh, But range cubes will work, and and I have had some amazing fishing trips where I've just pitched some range cubes out there in the water and nothing else and and caught tons of channel catfish over and over again all day long with just the range cubes. Um, Specific to the cottonseed cakes, I don't think there's a whole lot of companies out there that are making true cottonseed cakes anymore. I know there's a couple of websites that advertise that they sell them, uh, they're very expensive. Uh, the shipping is just outrageous, and I, I just don't think that I would waste my money on ordering those kind of things and having them shipped in because I, I'm not 100% confident that they're the, the same product that they used to be. So I think if I was going to buy something like that, I would make sure that uh, I bought that locally and not something that I bought online and make sure you ask some questions. Um, I, I, again, I've covered all this in depth on the website, so I'm just going to go back and put links to all these articles in the show notes, and you can go back and read all the articles about chumming, baiting holes, all the different uh, forms of chum. And there's another article on there called Catfish Punch Bait 101 that I'll link to that really is a great resource you need to make sure you read if you're interested in this kind of fishing. Uh, the next one fell right back into the chumming category, and 
this guy didn't leave his name, but uh, he sent in the question and said, I uh, saw on your website that you don't like to use soured corn for chumming for catfish. Uh, can you explain to me what the reasoning behind this is and why? And uh, the reason I don't like to use soured corn is I don't think that it works as well as the soured wheat and soured milo. Personally, I think the reason behind that is it doesn't have quite as strong a smell is the wheat and milo does in my opinion but outside of that I think what the issue is is a, a kernel of soured corn is a whole lot bigger than a kernel of soured milo or a kernel of soured wheat um, you know I don't know how many times the size but it's considerably larger and my personal opinion is is that the channel cat get in there and they get to moving around and feeding on that corn and that they fill up quickly and they quit biting because the whole principle behind chumming is to get that scent in the water get that food spread around and get the fish moving around feeding on that chum and looking for it if you just take and dump a big pile of corn over the side of the boat or even spread that corn out and they get in there and they fill up on that quickly once they get full they're gonna quit biting so I'm just not a huge fan of it. You know, we have some grain silos back behind the house, and uh, those trucks come in to deliver that corn to the grain silos. And when they do so, they have uh, a bunch of corn falls out of the back of the trucks onto the ground. And, and years ago, we used to go down there, and they'd let us uh, take a shovel and, and scoop all that corn up out of the, the parking lot um, from the dirt to take with us. And, you know, it was free. And I had an, an endless supply of all I wanted and uh, would love for it to work and be effective because I could have more corn than I would ever know what to do with uh, through picking it up down there at the silos. I just don't think it works. And, you know, certainly you'll catch some fish with it uh, if you throw it out there. But I just don't think at the end of the day that, it, that corn works as well as uh, the wheat or milo. And the next question, again, back in the chumming frame, I guess I should have called the chumming show uh, or, or the baiting a hole show or something. Uh, the next question came in from Don, and Don sent me a, the question, said, how do you locate a place to bait a hole for catfish? And Don, uh, how I pick a place is, uh, honestly, I wish I could say, but the first thing I do is I look for something that I think is fishy. Um, I target structure and cover most of the time when I'm fishing for channel catfish. Uh, sometimes that's docks. Sometimes that is submerged timber. Sometimes that is um, like cattails and, and flooded willow trees and things like that. It rocks. It really just kind of varies and depends a lot on the time of year and can vary from season to season. And, you know, I will say that I could probably talk for three or four hours on my thought process and what I look for when I'm picking a place to fish for channel catfish and probably an additional three or four or, or even more hours uh, by season on blue catfish and that's something that I'll probably get into ultimately and break down by season what I look for and and how I go about choosing those places but obviously I don't have the time to go in and, and do that in just one short podcast episode the best advice that I can give you Don is very rarely when I'm fishing for channel catfish do I fish in water that's more than about I would say eight feet deep at the most and that's pretty deep I really like fishing for channel catfish in shallow water um, I know a lot of guys who who fish for channel catfish in deep water and that will bait holes out in 30 40 50 60 feet of water and fish straight down for them uh, channel cat bite very light and most of the time I have people in the boat with me that aren't real experienced fishermen and when they get out in that deep water they oftentimes have a real hard time getting in tune with that bite 
and being able to set that hook. And uh, again, I know some guys that are that are just crazy successful fishing that deep water for channel catfish and baiting those holes in deep water. But it's just not something I do a whole lot of. I have in the past, and it's something that I will do at times if I'm fishing by myself. But I do a lot of my channel cat fishing I do in the summertime uh, when the blue cat bite slows down, when I go out and specifically target channel catfish. But you can catch channel catfish in shallow water all year long. It doesn't matter how cold it is. It doesn't matter how hot it is. You can catch channel catfish in shallow water all year. And by shallow water, I mean extremely shallow water. A lot of the times, the places that I fish will be a foot or less. Um, certainly, a lot of fishing in two, three, four foot of water. Very common. I uh, spend a lot of time chasing the channel cat in that shallow water. Um, I would say that if I get out in water that's deeper than about five or six feet, I'm kind of pushing the extremes. And certainly, like I said, no more than eight feet in most occasions, and that's getting out pretty deep. Uh, the best advice that I can give you is, again, target that cover. Uh, you can catch them in open water, but I like fish and cover. I like to have something nearby um, for cover and like to have something nearby for structure. I like cattails. I like riprap and, and rocks, uh, concrete walls, boat docks, uh, willow trees, old salt cedar and bodiark trees, you name it, but I like to try to find something nearby that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to fish in it, but I like to have something nearby and around it. Oftentimes, I will look for cover that is near structure, uh, but that is, again, it's a general rule and not an absolute because a lot of times you can get way up on mud flats and catch channel catfish throw some weed out there, spread it out real good, use that baseball technique that I cover on the website, make sure that stuff spread it out, put you a slip bobber on there, throw it out there, and give it a try. The best advice that I can give you is when you get on the lake, pick you four or five spots to throw that grain out there and chum those holes and pick some different areas. Pick you a spot that's three or four feet deep near some rocks and a spot that's three or four feet deep near some cattails or near a boat dock or near some trees and then go about a, a little bit deeper and, and pick you some different places and you're going to catch fish in some of them and not catch fish in the other. And the trick is if you get out five or six feet of water near some trees and you start catching fish, then you have to go out and look for other areas that are like that when the fish stop biting. So if you know they're in five or six feet of water, you know they're holding up around the outside of some trees or up around the outside of some cattails or up around boat docks or whatever the case may be, then once you figure that out, again, once you catch that first one, catching the first one is the hardest part with channel catfish, then you know what you need to do to go out and duplicate those efforts to find them again. And more often than not, if you find them in five or six feet of water or two or three feet of water outside some trees or outside some cattails, once you go and you find some similar, uh, some similar areas to that that produces for you, you're going to be able to whack them and stack them in every single place that you go to. Sure, you're going to have some spots that you're going to hit that are similar that you're not going to catch them, but you're going to more often than not you're going to be able to catch fish in those areas if you just keep at it. Oh, I have a ton more questions about chumming. I may come back around at some point and just make a chumming show and just talk completely and totally about chumming from A to Z and baiting a hole from A to Z, start to finish in one or two episodes and cover everything that I can tell you uh, at some point, but I'm going to get off this topic for now and move on to something else because uh, 
a lot of people aren't interested in can, ch catching channel catfish or they may already know a lot of this stuff. The next question I had came in from uh, Jeff, and Jeff asked me, what's the secret to keeping your leader line from wrapping around the main line on a jug line? I have this problem even when making the leaders holding the hook short. And uh, Jeff, there's an article on the website about rigging catfish jug lines. And in that article, I explain step by step how to rig jug lines. But the trick to keeping the leaders from wrapping around the line is to use a knot called a cat's paw knot. And I cover this in that article. Now, it's not going to completely and totally eliminate your leaders wrapping up around the main line because uh, it'll still happen some, but it will help to really greatly reduce those leaders from wrapping up around that main line. Uh, I personally don't like shortening those leaders. I like them to be about 10 or 12 inches long. I don't think that making them shorter does any good at all, but that cat's paw knot works wonders for really helping to hold that swivel out to the side and keep it from wrapping up around that main line. Again, you're still going to fight with it some, but it will greatly reduce it and make it a whole lot easier on you. And the other advice that I'll offer you is to make sure that you're using braided nylon twine for your leaders. I like to use number nine. I don't think there's any need to go any bigger than that. And that braided nylon line seems to help a whole lot more with uh, helping to keep those leaders from getting tangled up. I've heard of people trying to use weed eater line and having all kinds of crazy contraptions. And I've seen a ton of different things that people do over the years. I just don't think that any of them work. You're just going to have to deal with a certain amount of those leader lines wrapping up on the main line. Uh, you just want to minimize it as much as possible. And that cat's paw knot will certainly help to minimize that. And I've covered that in depth again in that article about rigging catfish jug lines. I'll go in and link to that in the show notes. There's also a lot more additional information in my ebook uh, about making catfish jug lines. And uh, you can go to jugfishing.info and find that or go up to the top of the page on Learn to Catch Catfish. And there's a, a banner up there across the top about how to make the best catfish jug lines. And you can find all that information in that book also. All right, last but not least, Dennis sent in a question and said, I've spent most of the afternoon looking over your website. There is excellent info on there. Uh, I'm curious, why do you use a 40-pound leader, and what line are you using on your fishing reels? And uh, Dennis, the 40-pound leader is used for, for a number of different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, the heavier line helps with uh, absorbing shock when you get strike from from a, a bigger catfish and also it helps with the abrasion resistance with the mouth of a catfish if you open up one of their mouths and you rub your hand down the inside of their lip you'll see that that the inside of that mouth is very abrasive on the top and on the bottom it's like a really really heavy grit sandpaper and, you know, if you rub your hand across it, it'll take all the skin off your hand if you're not careful. And when you catch a good-sized fish, especially with blue catfish, uh, channel catfish will run around and fight. But when a blue cat gets hooked, the first thing he does is he starts rolling. And if you catch fish in shallow water, you can really see this. But when he gets that hook in his mouth, he starts a roll, and he starts rolling over and over and over again. And they do that until you get them into the boat or until they get off. And that's a defense mechanism that they use. When you pull a blue cat up out of the water, uh, more often than not, you'll have slime way up the leader line or way up the fishing line where those fish have been rolling in that line trying to get off. And with that abrasion in their mouth, if you don't use a heavyweight leader, their mouths can literally just snap that line. So if you're using 8, 10, 15-pound test line, uh, those old blue catfish mouths, they can just break that line and nothing flat. But again, that leader line also helps absorb shock. So when you get a strike from a really big fish, that 40-pound leader helps absorb some of the shock that makes up for being able to compensate for the lighter weight main line. I like to use 
uh, clear 40 pound test monofilament for the leader line. That's what I've always used. I've tried to upsize to 50 pound and the 50 pound to me is just too, too hard to tie and work with and it doesn't really provide a whole lot of benefit over the 40 pound test. I can tell you of all the years I've been fishing, all the big catfish I've caught, I have never one time had a leader line break from a fish. Now I've had them, you know, wrap up around the motor and snap that leader line or, or wrap up around an anchor or something and snap the leader line, but I've never brought a fish in clean water that has snapped a leader, a uh, 40 pound test leader with their mouth. Uh, as far as brand goes, uh, Berkeley Trilene Big Game is a good leader line. Andy Monofilament is a good leader line. Um, the Bass Pro Shops Offshore Angler is a good line. I just like to use clear, and I like to use 40-pound test. And I, I honestly, on my leader line, I skip around from brand to brand a whole lot, just whatever I can find in a quarter-pound spool at that time at whatever store I'm in because a roll of leader line just you know it lasts forever. For the main line, I use 20-pound test monofilament. I like high vis bright green line and there's a number of reasons behind that but first and foremost is regardless of what kind of technique I'm using if I'm drift fishing fish in deep water anchored in shallow water you name it I like to be able to see where those lines are because a lot of times catfish won't pull straight out on a rod sometimes they'll pick it up and come straight at the boat sometimes they'll pick it up and go sideways having that high vis line makes it real easy for you to see what's going on with those lines and where those fish are moving because if you can't see it you're going to miss fish uh, right now i'm using bass pro shop offshore angler line and 20 pound test i've been using that for probably about 18 months or two years now i've used anti monofilament in the past with great success i've used trilane big game in the past with great success and uh you know they're they're all really good lines and work really well the 20 pound test I get a lot of questions about um, it you can catch anything in fresh water on 20 pound test line and uh, I'm just going to stop at that because I really covered this in great detail on the website about catfish fishing line and uh, I'll go into the show notes again on that one put a link to it you can go in and read some more about that with the main line and the leader line and why I prefer to use what I use so with that, I'm getting pretty close to 45 minutes here, so I'm going to try to wrap things up. I wanted to make this show a little bit shorter than the last one was. I really hoped to keep it to about 35 minutes, but I went way over. So hopefully as I get some more experience with this, I'll be able to get my timing down better. I uh, just want to throw a couple things out there real quick before I go any further and wrap this up. Uh, one, again, if you like the podcast... Go into the page on iTunes and leave us a rating on iTunes. Click the little stars down there on the bottom and write a quick review in and let people know that you like Catfishing Radio from Learn to Catch Catfish because that will definitely help with our exposure there on iTunes and get more people listening. And again, the more people that are listening, the more ability that I'm going to have to do things here with sharing information and move all this in the direction that I want to go for the future here with Learn to Catch Catfish and Catfishing Radio. The other thing is, uh, let me know what you think about the show. Once you get done listening, leave me a comment, shoot me an email, send me a message on Twitter, go to the Learn to Catch Catfish.com Facebook page, whatever you want to do, but leave me a quick note and let me know what you think because I really need feedback to let me know how I'm doing with producing these podcasts and what you'd like to see and give me a better idea of the direction that I need to go in the future because, again, this is all new to me. I'm just kind of learning as I go, and I'm just doing this all ad lib. I'm not going in and making a bunch of edits and uh, cutting stuff out and trying to really overproduce it because it's just really time consuming. So I'd really like to know what you think. And again, if you have questions about fishing for catfish, you'd like to be on Catfishing Radio, give us a shout, 817-381-5604. 
leave us a message and give us your questions and we'll see if we can't get them worked in to one of the future episodes of Catfishing Radio. And last but not least, if you like the show, let your friends know. If you like the website, let your friends know. When you run into people, talk to your buddies fishing. Talk to people at the bait and tackle shop that you know are interested in fishing for catfish. Tell them to stop by and visit learntocatchcatfish.com and tell them to come out and listen to the Catfishing Radio podcast and join in with what we have going on here at learntocatchcatfish.com. So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, Again, website is learntocatchcatfish.com. You can also go to catfishingradio.com to go directly to the podcast radio show. Still have some work I'm doing with that to try to get everything working right and up and running correctly, but it is a work in progress and should at least get you pointed in the right direction. Again, that's catfishingradio.com. If you want to come fish with me, you can find North Texas Catfish Guide Service at txcatfishguide.com. And if you want to learn some more about my catfish bait, go to catfishbaitsoap.com. Until next time, tight lines, and I hope you catch a big fish.